You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. Hey there, Helix fans. Are we going to get some sweet, sweet music? Oh, yeah. Is it time? Uh -huh. mm. Hey there, Helix fans. Welcome back to AfterBuzz TV's Helix After Show. This is Season 1, Episode 6, Anikatiga. I am Matt Lieberman. Joining me on the panel, as always, with fantastic crew of people. Uh, we have the wonderful and talented Miss Liz Rishmaui. Hey, guys. How you doing? Mr. Zach Wilson. Hey, hey. And Mr. Stephen Lemieux on the ones and twos. Hey, guys. Good to be back again. Yes. Oh, my God. What a great episode. Deepening the mysteries, making us ask so many more questions. Crazy stuff's happening. Crazy, so crazy stuff is happening. We finally left the base for a hot minute. I know. And there's more stuff out there. Who'd have thunk? And not just dead monkeys. Not just dead monkeys. Monkeys, oh, dead monkeys! But we did get a monk. We did get a monkey name check mm -hmm. this week when uh, our our new friend, the cryogenic professor, uh, let us know that he froze monkeys. I thought we were gonna get monkeys for real. I know. No, I wasn't expecting to see rats. No live monkeys, but uh, I had the monkeys of the mind. We could have had swimming monkeys. What does oh that God, mean? Don't monkeys even joke about that. The monkeys of the mind get to swing freely from neuron to neuron inside my brain, and they get to eat the bananas of the soul. Monkeys in the membrane. Exactly. <laughs> but let's actually talk about the show now. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, big news this week. I want to just I want to start with Julia and her crazy dreams. Mm. I know that we're not starting at the exact beginning of the episode, but uh, I, I want to jump all over because there's so much good stuff. I want to actually, uh, while you're talking about Julia, I want to... Uh, Tease that we will have Julia in studio next week. Yes, for our oh, after show week. here. Oh yes. yeah, the beautiful Kira Zagorski is going to be here live in our studio. Can't Yay. wait. It's going to be wonderful. Um, so she is sweating it out uh, after last week. You know, she and Dr. Take are still quote unquote trapped on level R, um, and she's you know really struggling with the virus. She's having these weird hallucinations. I like this scene where she, um, you know, she's like, why did you let me continue to believe that Jay was real? You knew that she wasn't real, and you, you let me believe it. You're obviously some kind of evil mastermind. Well, not in so many words. Right. It's like you're like sadistic or something like that. Yeah. But he had a good reply. I mean, I thought that there was kind of like a moment there where he was just like, it seemed to be, I mean, because it's, it's true, you know, it seemed to help her. I mean, if I was in that situation, I'd want someone else to be there and not know that, like, you know, I was by myself running away from these vectors and stuff sure. like well, that. Well, it's just a legit reason. I mean, you're running from a vector. It may not be the appropriate time to mention that she is hallucinating This other might people. freak you the hell out, but uh, <laughs> the person you're talking to is not at the it's phone right now, if you get it. Yeah. You just picture her, like, dropping him because suddenly she th doesn't realize there's no one else supporting his weight. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She probably got, like, her adrenaline going was, like, really strong strong because she right. thought that there was someone else helping her. So. But then he injects her with what he calls a sedative, sedative and I'm like use your freakish vector strength and stop him. Don't let him inject you with something. You don't know him. You well, don't trust well, she him. She was kind of like under like really really sick and hallucinating. She I couldn't know. have done that. And she wasn't a vector yet. So I she guess. didn't have the vector she strength. She was pretty far along. She's like early Peter style vector. Mm. She needs some water. Which begs the question, <laughs> She's uh, begs the question, if she's like Peter, are Peter and Alan also freaky clones? Because we got some clone stuff going on. We we all assume that Julia is Hitake's cloned daughter. Or, I, think, yeah. I think I can speak on that. And uh, uh, Sorry, that, Billy uh, Campbell is here in, in studio uh, with us. Please, he, Billy, enlighten us. It's not, we're not actually clones. It's just uh, we have the same taste in women. 
Okay. And uh-huh. uh, he just didn't get punched in the throat when he was smaller and can speak clearly. Right, but here's the thing, Billy, because uh, what, what's, <laughs> what's driving me nuts is only Julia and Sergio have been a- reacting to the virus in this fashion, and they aren't completely nuts. You know, do we know for a fact that Sergio is in- infected or not Sergio, try, uh, Peter, to... Peter, my mistake. Okay. Cause I tried asking a lot of questions, but I don't seem to get many answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a tough row to hoe, uh, Billy. Uh-huh. Or, or, yeah. No tough row to hoe. Have you never oh, heard okay. that, that term? Uh, you know, road. It's a tough a hoe to clear. row as well. What up? Uh, uh, we'll get to um, that later. Yeah. So Julia, uh, he injects her with this mystery stuff. Yeah. I'm assuming it was blood red. I just, I just assumed it was Hitachi blood. I don't think it was blood. No, I it just, was Sodra. It was you guys. No, it but was the Sodra. But the Sodra. Why didn't they show the Sodra going through the tube when they injected it into into um into Peter, Peter last week? And it was like clear. It wasn't red. Yeah, I don't think it was red. Yeah. I think whatever it was, it maybe it was a mixture of Sodra and Hitake's blood. Well, no, was, because here's the thing. Blood color, they used though. Sodra last week. They used Sodra uh, last week or two weeks ago on Peter, right? Um, two weeks ago. Yeah, he's not Super yeah. Saiyan yet. No, so. he's not Super Saiyan. He doesn't have the freaky <laughs> eyes. First of all, second of all, different color, different delivery system, and we showed that it doesn't destroy the virus. And it acts like right away. If anything, something is getting enhanced. Right. Well, it doesn't do that virus in Peter, but if Julia's been bioengineered for this purpose, it would affect her differently. You Mm. know what else too? You know, Hitake did make that passing comment about like having good genes. Yeah. So maybe him specifically, whatever he did to himself to make him whatever he is now. Yeah. If she is a clone of him, she has his genes. So something about their genes and the virus work together. I'm gonna throw this out there. Sorry, uh, go go ahead, Steven. What if, no, what if the difference between Narvik A and Narvik B is the fact that one has Hitaki's genes and it one doesn't? Hmm. Because I thought other Ooh. things were injected with both A and B. Like, didn't Peter have you? Didn't we talk about how Peter did a little bit of both A and B? He had both A and B. Yeah. And that may be why he's different from all the other people. Maybe. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure about that. But if that is true, then that does actually kind of answer your question. Because since Julia is the clone of Hataki, okay. she's or we she, assume. right. She has his DNA in her already. Yeah. Um, so Narvik B wouldn't affect her or wouldn't affect her in the same way as it would affect other people if Narvik B was a delivery system for his DNA, hey, yes. which guys, I'm not saying that it is. Guys, where are you getting clones from? Yeah. I will tell you where I'm getting Cause, clones cause, from. Because Miguin's character is not a clone. He's a twin. No, he was we a know. kid. Yeah, yeah I know. think, if anything, this has dispelled a lot of the clone theories. Going into this episode, I actually... I stopped thinking that Julia was a clone of Hitaki. Mm-hmm. I think that she... because clone he, of the Hitaki, daughter. Yeah, just like a straight-up clone of his daughter. Yeah, right. That's recreation. Yeah, yeah. But now that we know that there are literally children being stolen from a nearby yes. village, I think it has to clear the path well, of like... Said ch- children all over the world were getting disappearing, I thought. It no, it was all over the territory. Oh, it was the like territory. within 200 miles of the base. Okay. Yeah. And so we have to assume that Julia is one of those children. Yeah. Hmm. Taken into the base so we in also, Montana, quote unquote. Yeah. So the, the thing is, though, she was a kid. How would she know what really is Montana and what's not? Yeah, that was the thing is, is like, you know, I, I keep thinking of like, I don't, we don't know anything about clones. Well, let's just step aside from the clones for a second. But like, Fine. I'm thinking, I'm saying, Initiate it's, it's always monkeys 48. or clones with you. Um, but the yes. thing is, is that like, I mean, he seen, he adopted Miguin, or I'm sorry, Daniel, for whatever reason. So maybe it isn't even necessarily like, his daughter or any sort, they don't even share any genetic, you know, material. It's just that maybe he just, she excelled in all the tests and stuff that they, whatever they were doing to her as a child. So maybe he just grew close to her like an attachment. Idea. And Does it involve up. fusion? Shut up. I have an idea. <laughs> hold I, your idea for just two seconds. My idea is comfy and furry and I will hold it. Okay, yes. Oh, I keep thinking about a bunny now. Finish your point, Liz. Sorry. So, yeah, so the, basically, like, I think that maybe he just grew really attached because she was excelling more than the other children in the test. Mm. And maybe he actually did lose a daughter, but he just, you know, substituted his emotions for her. What's your idea? Is it fuzzy and cute? It's similar to that, but different. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> similar, but different. He doesn't have a daughter. Remember when Jay said, oh, maybe he'll tell us more lies about his daughter. 
Yeah. Uh, he never had a daughter. Meguin's he considers his son because he adopted him like that, but Meguin stayed on the base. Uh-huh. Julia was smuggled out of the base by Jay and put up like given to somebody else to take care of her. Maybe. Julia was saved and but he still kept tabs No, on no, her. no. Well, I don't know that it's necessarily Jay. I feel like that may be a leap, but I do like the idea of he believed that his daughter died in a fire. He believed that she died in a fire, but her mother, whoever she was or who whatever woman rescued her, stole her away and and years later Hatake discovered that his quote unquote daughter was still alive. Or yeah. she tried Ooh. to kill Hatake in the fusion fire. And that's how he got the burns and things like that. Or he just tried to save wait, her from Wait, wait. Was the fire from the fusion lab? We're assuming. They never said that. They, but you they said that. where you the fire see, was, didn't you they? You could see the burns in the fusion lab. That's why you associate yeah, on the, that on with the steel fire. walls. And Hitaki only just said there was a fire. And whatever he said could right. easily be well, he, a lie. No, he said there was a fire back in his te- when his home in Kyoto. Right. In his home in Kyoto. But, but that could, could be, be a lie. He could be making that up. Yeah. Fine. I want to talk about the fusion thing because I'm wondering, right, uh, what he injected her with, does it make her resistant to radiation? Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if we go off the theory that Hatake became whatever he became because of some failed experiment with fusion, um, that whatever whatever Julia is now is related to that. And I know that we're, we're, we're off on a ledge, on a precipice, because it's all based on the idea that you know, Hatake became what he was because of fusion, but I feel like we should talk about it. I think that the fusion was, I, I don't think they're doing the fusion anymore. I think the virus is the next, st- it's the new version, essentially. Mm. Like the fusion was a way to try to do it. Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, but it wasn't effective enough. Do you think that they were using the fusion to try to cure cancer like they're doing with Narvik A? I mean, radiation does cure, yeah, does cure do cancer. Radiation. That's if, if if this is one of the reasons that they're at the base. If that's legitimate, if that's true, right? We uh, we can only trust Hitachi as far as we can throw him, right? Um, and not as far as he can throw because us. Because a virus that can further. cure ca- a virus that can cure cancer, while brilliant, is not something that a paramilitary organization or a huge shady company would pay for as a weapon. No, yeah. but we do know that Hitachi, like we or we figure Hitachi has his own agenda here right could his like this is almost leading me to believe that hitaki may have a better like a more worldly good guy agenda than this ilaria corporate like paramilitary right because even because even hitaki is afraid of them yeah let let me throw something to um dna goes together so perfectly like a puzzle being like a zipper just being zipped up as a zizzer as yes okay (laughs) and when there's like the there's the the adenine, the thymine, the guanine, the cytosine, like all of these things go together. But what if... Listen to him go. I know. I was what? like, did you just... I thought those were names from the people from the village nearby where the children no, were going but missing. Like, but <laughs> imagine for a second that this virus is delivering a new set of like these groups of these pairs. So basically mm-hmm. like that scene in Spider-Man where he they like show the D- new spider DNA coming together. No, Can I more, visually think of that. Well, more, more like in, more like instead of having f- like two pair two like four different things for DNA to connect together, it introduces two more and the virus is to mm-hmm. introduce one and then what and then the radiation was to cause a mutation to introduce the other one. So the right. virus interacts with regular DNA a certain way, but when it's been altered by the fusion or whatever, it introduces it a different way and comes together perfectly as opposed to a mishmash of like cytosine mixing with the virus as opposed to whatever is supposed to mix with the virus mixing with the virus. This will only make sense if you know what biology is. Yeah, I, I like, am. Otherwise, you'll be utterly lost. lost. I, I am following you. I'm still thinking of the spider. Like, it works exactly what you were saying is the exact mental image I had with the spider DNA. And now, like, oh, look, everything's blue and red. And it was just like that because it was just like two new things. Like, uh, it's like, right imag- imagine, imagine having an extra chromosome, <laughs> except... You need it. You need it. You need two extra chromosomes to be perfect for it to, to to create something new. But you only get one if you only have the virus. But if you have the mutation plus yes. that, you have both. No, I totally get what you're yeah. saying now. I, I I'm on board with that. With the two, you do need like, like either Sodra or whatever it was that I'm Sodra still calling plus. it Hitaki blood. Yeah. Um, it was too diluted looking though. Blood is like much well, darker, it's distilled. thicker. Distilled. I'm gonna thicker call it. I'm gonna call it the serum. The serum. The serum. When you take. The zism. serum, you will never be the same. The zism. It needs a, it no, needs an echo, though, Matt. Serum. Say it one more time. The serum. serum. 
<laughs> I like that. Um, but I'm I'm on board with that. Yeah. It needs two things. I I, I think Narvik the beat. fusion thing. I think we're getting a little too caught up on because it was something that's been phased out, and I don't think they're hiding another fusion reactor somewhere in the base. Well, I, I mean, think it was. I think the fusion was the original plan. Yes, that was the I agree. original plan, and then once it failed. Because the kids died in the fire or whatever, and only like Meegwin survived and uh, and Meegwin Julia. His name survived. is Dan. The the Dan. actor's name okay. is Meegwin yes. Fairbrother. Thank you. Then Sodra was being developed to be the next thing to create this new base of pairs. Hmm. And that's what it is. Is like the virus will attack your DNA in such a way unless you're administered Sodra with it to create what you're supposed to be. What did we say it was that uh um that Doreen found out like what what did she say about the DNA that she found out that when before uh, Sergio killed her she that just was, realized she never carrier, started the that the timer. virus was the carrier right yeah the, the virus was was a carrier for something that would change oh, okay. DNA okay so basically what what Alan and uh, Sarah just discovered now is what Doreen had discovered before she was yeah. we still don't know why it reacts that certain way when it was that what what did they put on it to make it go some kind of chemical. I they didn't yeah, really it, show. Was us. it water? <laughs> it was not water. No, it was the same basic thing that Sergio and Doreen did before. Um, before, but they they were trying to incubator. culture it. They were yeah, trying to yeah, they're culture. trying to grow it. It's just not supposed. To, it's supposed to expand a little bit to do in that, the petri but dish. But it not. grows like crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless it's in the super cold, and we're gonna talk about all that in just a little bit. Going to talk real quickly about the iTunes. You all knew it was coming. You love this part of the show. Some of you, it may even be your favorite part. You're the weird people. You're my favorites. Because here's the thing, folks. We do this show because we love Helix. It's an amazing show. It's doing great gangbusters, ra gangbusters ratings for uh, sci-fi. We're so excited about it. We hope that we get second season, third season, six seasons in a movie. Let's just all <laughs> jump on the bandwagon right now. Uh, but here's the thing, folks. We do this show because we want to get Helix out there. We want to make it as popular and as awesome for everybody as it is for all of us. What can we do to help spread our message forth? What can we do, Incubate Matt? it. Tell Incubate us. it. You, well, you can either build a, ma try to make a culture out of it and see where that gets you, or you can go to iTunes. You can slap the show with a rating. Five stars is my favorite kind of rating because oh, yeah. it's the fullest, and I like a full meal when I'm stepping up to some kind of plate. Mm. And this is the proverbial plate. Full meal, five stars, and leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, I know there was a bit of an issue with um, with one of the podcasts on, on iTunes this week. It's all fixed. We, yeah. We put I don't a know. band-aid on it. I don't know what happened. It's fine. But I'm just going to re give shout-outs to a few people who left reviews. Uh, Monster X gave us a five-star rating. You guys are great. You're very insightful. Love listening to the podcast. It's really increased my enjoyment of the series. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, fi uh, Fisigna. 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 Five stars. Love the podcast. It just dawned on me. I have to give this podcast five stars. Love the panel. I never miss a podcast, but I don't really watch the show. And then I think I can take the next one, Matt. Take it. Um, I love the podcast. Great personalities. <laughs> it really helps me figure out what I just watched. And when I nobody answers anything for me, that really helps. But where is the most recent one? Well, it's on iTunes now because Steven from the booth. Hey, guys. Uh, said that it was fixed. <laughs> yeah, I fixed it. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Billy Campbell, everyone. We uh, we just keep him on hand. We keep him in the closet here. And yeah. We we trot him out for the Helix we, show. We keep him in the dark. We don't answer him in any of his questions, but we'll let him talk a few times. We'll let yeah. him talk a few times. Yeah. We'll, we'll let him see Sarah too. Okay. So yeah, Speaking let's talk about much. Sarah and Ooh. Alan. Uh, some sweet. Let's get it on. Mm -mm. That's love, sugar. Can can I can I say it please? Yeah. That's not the right song for this mood. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> I want to say I want to say it how I say it because this is how I say it whenever two characters totally bang on a show that I review. That's right, everybody. Alan and Sarah totally banged. Only six episodes in, but that means that we're gonna have to deal with this relationship subplot throughout the rest of the series unless one of them dies first. I take this opportunity to remind you that the actress who plays Sarah is still a guest star on the show, which means she could be killed at any time. Terrifying. That, I know. That wasn't as happy as the music. It was not. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. 
You heard it here first. They keep having scenes with happy music, I like the little ballet I dance love chemical Plum thing. Fairy. Yeah, dance of the sugar plum fairies, and there was another one la, this week. La, and uh, yeah, I love that no. whole culture. Dangerous, scene. La, la, dangerous. La, 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 music is too happy. La, 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 Bad things happen la, la, when happy la, music la, gets played. La, la, la. Oh, but it's so cool. I just I love that choice. Yeah, just, oh yeah, it was great. Ritzy spider crap. Yeah, that's creepy. When yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. gross. Ugh. But it, no, it, uh, it it significantly ups the tension. It makes us sit on you know the edge of our seat worrying about what's going to happen as the diligent CDC workers grow these little bitty cultures. Little Narvik A here, little Narvik B here. Oh, what could possibly happen? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> ziz everywhere. Disgusting. How are you gotta get the uh, fire extinguisher. Yeah. In your hair. Dun, 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 <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the big news this week. So Peter uh, totally bangs her. Peter did not bang nope, her. Not at Alan all. Oh, wait, no, Alan. Her. Yeah, that's yeah. right. My bad. In an attempt to rescue Julia and save Peter. Although Peter's gonna try now. I right. mean, yeah, it's his, his brother. Game. He's oh, got it. Yeah. He's got to Yeah. He's got to get on. The, if his get brother bangs that. someone, he better. He's got to bang him too. He'll, um, just, he'll just show up in Sarah's apartment and be like, "Hey, I'm infected. You know, can you like give me some morphine? Maybe we just kind of like have a little." Can party? I just say though, I was actually kind of just like it was pretty much in a, in, inevitable that they were gonna hook up. Right. And I just want to say that like. I kind of was disappointed with how it happened because it was only like what this is. It was last episode with the whole morphine bit. Yeah, where he was disgusted and how she was on drugs. He goes from like completely disgusted and everything, and then all of a sudden it's just like I can't lose anybody else. I can't lose. Well, you know, the one day to endear yourself to people once you've pissed them off is to mercy kill somebody else. Right, and then totally (laughs) not fess up to where and why and how. Totally. I mean, yeah, because, you know, like death, you know, man, like killing people totally turns some people on. But anyway. The greatest aphrodisiac. They go from one uncomfortable kiss to just like, I'm going to pick you up and throw you against this mirror and take you. She is a tiny woman. She's so tiny. I want to put her in my pocket. It's pretty rad. I know. I just like like go shopping with her and be like, what do you think of this outfit? She just pops up. himself in her pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't let them pick Gross. your pocket. <laughs> anyway, That's I was just saying, like, yeah. I feel like we knew it was going to happen. I'm surrounded by men. We knew it was going to happen. It's true. She is. <laughs> just let them know. Sorry, let boys. her know when you're about to ziz. Boys. Uh, gross. Boys. You sick person. That is gross. You know what? Ziz is not come that. back there. Well yeah. done, sir. Um, but no, I was just, you know, I, I just generally speaking, this is my personal opinion. We knew it was going to happen, but I'm just a little let down. Like, I know there's not really like time to go and whine and yeah, dine. I thought and she would, her. she would earn, she would earn her way back yeah. into his good graces first. I thought we'd hear a, what's with this big scar on your back? Oh yeah. Nobody seems to notice that even oh, though they're yeah. naked like, and his did... hand is on it. Oh yeah. What's I up know. with that? He doesn't notice the big scar on her back after he totally bangs. He's got a strange spine. Well, maybe. And you know Alan's. Maybe she was only facing him the entire time. Why is? <laughs> why do we know? Yeah. Why do we know that he's looking at her back, Zachary? I'm not gonna explain because she I walked would away prefer from him. that you explain. <laughs> she walked away from him. That's why. Her back was up against the wall the entire time. Yeah. Anyway. Which was a mirror. It's true. Was it a mirror? So yeah. oh, shit. that means that someone totally did see her back as he repeatedly penetrated her again. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> my grandma might hear <laughs> this Matt. podcast. Does your grandma listen oh. to this podcast? She, she wants to keep up with it. Oh, well, that's... Hi, grandma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Thank you. No more discussion of... The bang. Bodily things. Right. Well, no, it was. It happened without getting graphic. It right. happened fast. Yes, I thought oh. that was tasteful. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> we're not getting graphic. It was. Uh, he was in and out, and uh, we're we're done. Um, I but for, I know it's television, but it seems like his brother's just been put into this like cryogenic sleep. There's a lot of tension. Right. It seemed. I mean, there he, was was, some, he was on I was, the verge of tears. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but I guess there was this look on Sarah's face afterwards that she was, had, like, almost suspicious. She had huge doe eyes the entire time. Like, she was just begging. Like, she wanted some endearing moment to happen. It just She had, like, she had like Clara eyes. Wait, so you're not you're not saying that this is exactly how she envisioned their first time being <laughs> yeah. out in, in a uh, lab. In a lab, all their friends are dead. Um, or dying. Yeah. Or dying I loved. I loved. Doesn't everyone uh, want to go into the middle of nowhere with their lover? And, it's true. But I will, you know what I will say though. Billy Campbell. 
<laughs> Doggy Banging style. Sarah. Okay. Can we stop talking about sex? There's so okay. much other stuff yes. that happened this I episode. Wanna, I just wanted to say, though, that I think also taking into consideration the fact that she knows she doesn't have a lot of time left. And yeah. She yeah. Did, we did say that she really, really admired him and looked up That's to fair. him. Right. So that being said, not a surprise. Bam, it happened. Right. So. What? No, I just. Speaking of her cancer, yes, which Narvik A is supposed to cure. cure. Oh, oh yeah. Mm hmm. I totally predict she will be injecting herself with the virus. Come anytime that uh, she gets desperate. Yep. Or she you doesn't know. have any problem injecting herself with stuff. It's no. true. She loved that more. But um, plus shame. she was getting a little jealous because <laughs> oh, he kept saying, "You sick bastard." <laughs> plus she was getting a little jealous because he kept saying he wants to go down and save Julia. Yeah, it's right. true. Oh, yeah. She had like this worried well, look on her still, face, like "Love me." She love still me. was willing to come down to level R after he totally made thermite. Go you, Alan. Oh my God! Can we please talk about that scene yeah. when they're about to go down there? Okay. Oh wait, you were getting on that. You just said thermite. That's why so I, I got really about. excited. Uh, yeah, that's great. I know you're but, allowed to be excited. Yeah. So it was really cool. It was yeah. so cool. I mean, just I, oh, and he sawed off that vector's hand. It was so rad. So and quick. The ziz went everywhere. Can I just say how humorous <laughs> it is to me that two nights before the re premiere of The Walking Dead, the episode that Helix brings out without giving away any spoilers was so much more cooler and action packed and like zombie like and creepy and scary than what they showed on The Walking Dead. Anyway, fun fact: their crafty table during this episode had snack pack pudding. Nice. Awesome. Is that actually a real fun fact? I, I probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> I also loved his uh, his brief eul eulogy of Doreen. No, I thought that was really yeah. nice. I, I think it gave a good homage to like, because you know what, honestly, the whole thing is, is like, I feel like we all miss Doreen. We love Doreen. Hi, Kat. But we just, you know, gave more of a, a, a feeling like, okay, now I really am sad that this, it wasn't like, oh, we just threw this character in because we needed somebody to die so he can finally get a fire lit under, up under his ass. Right. So he actually cared. He's like, we've been through like, what was it, 10 years together? Yeah, five outbreaks. Seven um, outbreaks? Or maybe it's seven years, five outbreaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know. Were 17 years. 17 yeah. years, five outbreaks. I always thought, he's like, I always thought it was me leading you but it was you, you pushing, pushing me. me i mean that was <laughs> he was pushing Sarah. stop womp, it womp. okay anyway <laughs> but no i thought that was a great scene um that but that whole scene just was so freaky though i mean the, the they broke through the glass. Yeah. They're obviously all like very, very, very strong. He sewed off the arm. I'm surprised they even got away. I kind of wish yeah. that that scene was extended just a little bit, mm -hmm. but I feel like that was just a glimpse into what we will get in future episodes. Well, it, it also gave us an idea of the numbers of the vectors. Yeah, I was just about to say, they, we had never seen that many vectors before. Yeah. We knew that there were like two running around, yeah. and right. now there's a big group of right. them. Right, I counted at least we're seven. We're having hordes. At least seven vectors. Hordes. At least we know that he has like a lightsaber saw that can cut off an arm in like two seconds. Steven, I just got your pudding reference joke and thank you for that. Yep. I just got it. Delayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it was <laughs> also 112 <laughs> ounces of pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Helix. <laughs> it was also interesting that this is the first time we've seen actually two vectors next to each other, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Um, yeah, usually they're lone wolves. Yeah, but they. I was expecting them to be almost competing or anything. They just kind of were... It's like zombies. They were just kind of ignoring each other while yeah. they went for the, the Well, yeah, meal. because, again, the whole mindset is like we must – it's it's that horde mindset where it's like we must infect. So they're not really interested in anything if it's already infected. Right. Um, well, then Unless I, it's Dr. Otake, but well, he's no, probably but They attack Julia. No, yeah, I was just about to say until it completely sets in and takes over and you are a vector, they don't care. Yeah, now I told you now we're going to get that scene with Julia coming face-to-face -face with a vector yeah. and you're not going to do anything. Yeah. You just walk through the crowd. Because she's mm. she's triple infected. All she's right, got so all the stuff. Let's throw out some predictions real quick with with what's Wait. going on. No, not 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 and, formal not, predictions. Not formal predictions. But what about the whole scene with uh, we're, Sergio? Yes, we're we're not, getting not there. Not formal oh, we're getting predictions. There. Getting oh, not formal. We're getting okay. there. Oh, I'm sorry. Z ziz, come on. Stop calling me Ziz. I'm not black gooey stuff. Ziz um, Zish Maui. Okay, 112 ounces of Ziz. Um, anyway, s damn it, I lost my train of thought. No, with um with. Peter being in the Cairo stasis, like cryostasis, cryostasis, Cairo, Cairo, whatever. It's Egypt. It's Egypt. Cryo. Um, well, it's Montana. It might as well be Egypt. Cryo. So, like, think of it. The cold slows down the virus, mm -hmm. and we see that with the fire extinguisher thing that sprays coldness on it. And you got to wonder where is where is this going to go? Because this is somebody who's actually 
Because they made a point of bringing this cold out, making this in an Arctic base surrounded by cold. Like, was this planned from the beginning? Is it planned to be in the cold so nothing can escape? Like, what's the deal with that? I don't think necessarily because with most things, cold slows down like viruses or viruses cannot breathe. They cannot grow in, in colder temperatures. That's just basic biology with most like things. So I think that's why it's in Antarctica. I don't think... I think that just goes for any virus. It has nothing to do with how they knew this would one would react, but it's reacting like most other ones would. No? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna say the reason why they're up there is because there's no national jurisdiction. Well, they're yeah, outside well, yeah. of the jurisdiction that. of any government. That's why they're there. It's, yeah. And there's really no other place that's not freezing cold that exactly. you could do that. Yeah, there's North no, Pole. All right, Sergio time. <laughs> Sergio time. All right, so Sergio quickly and summarily kidnapped. From out in the cold. Can did I just say, any, I love that girl. Did yeah. anyone else think when that mask pops up that Princess, Princess Leia was going to yeah, pop totally. out? <laughs> yeah, no, it looked like her, her get up from the third Star Wars film. So that's how Sergio survived. He cut open a tauntaun and he crawled inside. Oh, I thought it smelled bad <laughs> on the outside. Good, Why does Sergio sound like That's my Billy like... Campbell. That's, okay. uh, that's not my Sergio. Okay. Clear your throat, Matt. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, anyway. Did anybody catch that girl's name? Uh, Anana. Oh, yeah, I that's remembered right. Anana. it because it sounded like banana. banana. So we're we gonna we're gonna ship them, Serge Nana. Serge Nana. Serge Nana. Uh, she Nanio. did get on top of him. No, Nanio. Dude, she I to I'm Nanio. totally like sensing the sensing that. Oh yeah, friction. totally. Come on, she like crawled on top of him. She's like, it can only get what was it? We could only get rougher. For, if you want us to get rougher from here, we can. Or no, no, no. It's like, how <laughs> dirty do you want it to go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> something like that something that she like that. said. Or um, she's bad. Let me just leave you on the couch shirtless. Yeah. yeah, in the cold. You're healing. Right. I have to so make sure let, let's set this up for people who maybe uh, listen to this show but don't watch Helix. So right. this woman, like, grandma. like the person in the review, they said they don't watch the yes. show, they right. listen to our show. All right. So uh, Anana, uh, she is the What's only- What's my name? Anana. Anana. What's my name? <laughs> oh, Anana. Anana. <laughs> Stop it. We're not doing songs until later. Yay, Steven, that was Jump good. in the it was very funny actually. <laughs> I like that a lot. So she's the only she's the only law keeper. She's she's got a badge. She's the only law keeper for, for what, two hundred miles? Yeah, a something lot. like that. A big, big area. She's investigating the uh, disappearances of children that have gone missing uh, Arctic it, system. Yeah, in the 200 mile yeah, radius some around 30 kids. Yeah, around Arctic biosystems mm -hmm. and over many years. Yes. Because if we're talking about Daniel growing up believing that Dr. Hatake was basically his father. Well, he was four when he was kidnapped. He was he four he when was he was four. kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what? Let's say that's maybe 25 years ago. 25, 20, yeah, 25, 25 to uh, 27. Yeah, rough, roughly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he can't be more, much more older than 30. Right. So, okay, so for the, at least the last 25 years, Hatake has been in the Arctic kidnapping children and raising them to either, either as experiments or maybe even some of them, you know, like they were so young when they were kidnapped that they went off, got their doctorate degrees and came back as, uh, as doctors. doctors. Yeah. Well, the other thing is too is that like, I mean, if if Julia going just going back for a quick second, if she can't remember things from her past. Yeah, I mean maybe there's a certain way of brainwashing them or implanting false memories. So even if you know, even if he you know he's just been brainwashed after a while and he doesn't remember you know being from the Arctic or having a brother or sister, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I just think I like I wonder why Sergio didn't just up and admit that he had seen Dan. I mean maybe it might be the part that he doesn't really give a crap that they're reunited because Dan did try to kill him. But, um, you know, like, I just I just wonder if it's going to come into play. And I'm kind of, like, excited at the idea of him having a twin because I feel like maybe there might be some body switching at one point. Like, they switch places. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. But, I mean, it does... <laughs> guys suck. No. It does, it does raise an interesting dynamic that, like, for Sergio, he... He doesn't know about this stuff, right? Yeah. So he clearly has no idea that all these kids are missing, right? Yeah. And how Which, much does he know? If he works for Alaria, yeah, or uh, Alaria Corporation, what? just for anyone who's maybe lost that that those choppers that show up at the end said of the episode Alaria. said Alaria Corporation. They were mentioned even from the first episode on the Helix uh, Access Grant. Wait a Helix second, guys. Access Granted on the website. Yes, Hataki is a Super Saiyan. Miguin's his son, and he has a twin brother. There, and it's fusion energy. They're gonna do the fusion. 
dance. No. They're I gonna do the fusion dance. No more Dragon Ball Z references. No, yes. you can say monkeys all the time. I get to stick with my DBZ reference. Fine. Monkeys, DBZ. monkeys, 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 Has- monkeys, 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 monkeys. Hashtag DBZ. Yes, hashtag DBZ. Mon- yes. Super if you mute me again, I will sit in every kind of monkey song you could possibly imagine. I'm the only one left. Ah, oh, God, oh, my ear. Ah. See, that's why he does it. He waits till we're yelling, yep. and then he puts it back on so that we get hurt in our ears. We hurt our ears. Yeah. Well, we, we anyway. For you guys. Yeah. So, uh, what most excites me is, is right, is that Sergio doesn't know that this is going on. Yeah. How much mm-hmm. is Alaria aware of? Where is their, wh- what is their aim? What did they want Arctic Biosystems to do versus what Hatake is doing versus what the government may or may not know about? Because, you know, Sergio, at the very least, posing as someone from the army, the army may have some degree of insight as to what they're doing up there. And I also want to know, like, I can't wait to see kind of this backstory between Dan. Like, I wonder why we kind of know that if Julia was one of these children, why she's special? Because clearly, like, you know, maybe she passed the test or has some sort of like connection to Hitake or whatever. But like, why was Dan so special that Hitake decided to like, you know, quote unquote, adopt him? And, well, you know, and what's he Dan was... going to do when he meets his sister or yeah. his twin brother? Like, I mean, come on. If you saw someone who looked exactly like you, you're not going to be like, what? I would I've, freak I've out. watched two and a half men before. So womp. All right. So <laughs> what? They're not identical twins. Okay. You 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 missed the joke, Matt. Okay. So, uh, oh, I still don't get it. I see it. I didn't. Oh, what is it about? Is it a weight joke? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we don't do that to Dan anymore. I know. Make I was jo- joking about myself. I used to get confused for the kid from half men all the time. Never mind, guys. Oh, never mind. You did now, it? now that's in my head, and You're I can't blonde. unsee it. But here's the here's here's the thing, folks. You're making me forget my point. Okay, um, when you're when you're adopting someone like uh, like Dan, it's not because of his brain. It's not necessarily because he's special. You're breeding loyalty, the fierce loyalty that comes with someone protecting a parent, um, and that's what I think he was doing with Dan. What haunts me consistently <laughs> is the opening of the pilot where Hatake, where someone asks, uh, I think it was Dan asked Hatake, you know. Um, what is it? And Hataki says, progress. We got progress again oh, this week. Everybody's saying progress. Progress yes. this week. So I'm wondering. And then the guy, the, the cryogenics guy said it too. He, at the end when they did it for Peter and they put him in the cryogenic right. thing, he goes, that's progress. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If they've been doing this for over 25 years, this whole Narvik stage could be just like stage seven in a 20 stage plan. Jesus. Like yeah. they've been working on this for a long time. Well, I that's what I started to think when when uh, Hataki like waved his hand and he just like opens up that door to like leave Secret Julia. Back door. Like it's just how much uh, like what kind of long con has Hataki been playing? Right. And he's prepared for everything except for Alaria coming to Arctic Biosystems. Yeah. He's so upset with Dan for taking out Sergio because what do you think is going to happen? They're going to come here. They're they are coming. It. And even Hataki is afraid of what they could do. I mean, I don't think he's afraid. I just think he's like, I think it's not really fear as much as crap. They're going to get it and mess up all my plans and right. stuff like that. Well, you question, you, you could say perhaps that everyone who's a frozen head could have been the previous heads of the place. And I don't mean that Ooh. as a pun, mm. but like Alaria comes in and is like, oh, things aren't going as planned. All right, well, let's put your head on ice and let's uh, let's tap into that knowledge you got with They're, somebody else. So why do They're- they want Dr. Havit? Well, if he's theoretically another Super Saiyan, right? Yeah. Virus Super Ziz Super Saiyan, um, hashtag DBZ, um, they want to study it. They Hitaki's clearly not giving them everything that they want, right? Because but I'm I'm a little confused. Like if Alaria Corporation is this thing, I'm assuming they're like a military contractor. Yeah, like Blackwater or, they, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they could. So they could be that, and then. Arctic Biosystems is a subsidiary or a separate no, company Arctic that Biosystems is being contracted? No, Arctic Biosystems is another company that's being contracted to do this thing. I don't think they belong to the Alaria Corporation. I think uh, it's it's a separate it's a separate company co- that's gotten these the research grants. It's the cover for... For Alaria. You know, it's the cover for the station they're at that Alaria funds, hmm. but it's the cover name. Okay. I don't know. No, well, I mean, it, it seems like they're, they're separate companies. Otherwise, why would you just name the secret space Alaria? Right. Here's my biggest question, and it may differ from the rest of you, is why 
how does Julia not realize that she doesn't remember anything from her life? She seems consistently she surprised. It was all a dream. <laughs> I hate you so much sometimes, I swear to God. Um, I just think, no, I honestly think that, you know, because she just, you know, when she talks about Montana, you notice that she never actually goes into detail about the things or activities she's done or seen or anything in Montana. And right. I think that after a while, whatever sort of brainwashing, you know, technique or whatever was done to make her forget or suppress these memories was just so strong you know, like, I mean, because even as she's dreaming about the scene, she's like, oh, this is Montana. Yeah. It's well, like, bitch, really? Montana this entire time has been a cabin? But anyway. Well, but Montana, in her mind, it was just this boring place where she grew up. If she's convinced of that basic little fact, yes. then all she, that's all she needs. She just doesn't need to focus on it. The part that with Julia's story that I found very interesting like, is when Turkeys Alan... Is? <laughs> no, but oh, I did enjoy yeah. that, and I yelled it at my television when I saw her going to carve the turkey. Yeah, there was totally going to be ziz in the turkey. <laughs> yeah, I literally just yelled, turkey ziz! Yeah. And then, but um, Alan at one point mentions Julia wrote the book on RNA sequencing, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, which it was uh, revealed online on the Access Granted as well. They showed a cover of her book about RNA sequencing. It seems to me that she was predestined for this career path. Hmm. It seems hard to believe that she would just go off, disappear for a little bit, and then come back, and like she happens to have knowledge on the exact thing that they're doing. What if she's not, what if she's only like 10 years old? No. Like she's a clone, and We're she dropping has- dropping the clone. I refuse to drop them, well, okay? The same way that a monkey refuses to drop a banana. But point at, part of the reason that, like what, what Zach came up with is that, um. I kind of agree, though, because there was that one scene where, you know, Mara's hallucination, Ju um, Sarah, was like, oh, Matt's dying right now. Mara's hallucination, I Sarah. <laughs> no, but he was. <laughs> Monkey letting go of a banana. Oh, my what? God. <laughs> danger zone. Oh, I'm in it. I'm in the danger zone. Anyway, Monkeys. I have no idea what's going on. Monkeys. But I just think that, like, maybe, you know, Hallucination Sarah was like, all the answers are inside you. Like, you know all the answers. You're just not letting yourself remember. Like, so apparently yeah. she knows every little aspect of what's going on. She knows everything. She just can't remember. So we're still waiting for, like, right. maybe her now being Super Saiyan, okay, mm -hmm. is, is now the reason, like, now she's going to remember everything. Maybe. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I also would like to just quickly say, Neil Napier, Peter... Very handsome when he's not all vectored <laughs> totally. out. Oh, yeah. Total totally, total stuff. I almost I didn't can, recognize him. Right? I'm like, I'm like, okay, I can, I can see why, What's why she on? cheated. What's yeah. going on? No, I like that he's all like, hey, well, you want me here, so, uh, so you know. here I am. And they're all like, I love me that, out. I love that whole scene, by the way, where they're just like sitting at the table, like, ha 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 ha. Oh yeah, just, like, watching, <laughs> watching. Uh, would you, would you pass the cranberry and, sauce? Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. And, then, and then Would Sergio, anyone like sweet potatoes? And then Sergio just <laughs> is just like really hungry. He's like, I'm really Arigato hungry. Arigato mazamasu. Oh, sweet potatoes. Your yeah. your Japanese pronounce like Stephen. Let me just say your Japanese. Like when you said that. Sh no, no, I will be. <laughs> we can't keep insurance. playing these games, people. I, I just, can't, you, we can't. You can't be keep, playing God. Can't playing these games. Yeah, we're no playing one's God. I'm in the booth, but I'm playing God. You are playing God. You are you're playing God, eardrums. and you're going to pay the price. I will. Of um, my medical bill. Do you guys want to get into predictions? <laughs> I would love we, to, because we also have songs to do. We have songs, yeah. you guys. And now, you're at After Buzz TV Predictions. I was meeting the predictions guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so what what do we know, people? All right, we've got Alaria coming in. They're gonna shake up the whole deal. Um, I think there's gonna be a massive like zombie, a la Walking Dead scene. I think they're gonna open up some doors. They're gonna demand to open uh, level R. Level R, and I think a bunch of them are gonna go flying out. There's gonna be a big fight scene. Um, I we get storm ninjas coming in. Oh yeah, we get more guns. Which, we get if hot blonde Elizabeth Banks looking woman. Yes, yes, Dr. Or Constance Sun, I think was her name. Oh, okay. Um, but also on the uh, on the online access granted, we got this little cool little video. If you go on there, of this like little skinny dude, he kind of looks like Fitz from Agents of Shield. Okay, and he just like bows and like takes out four dudes like the super ninja, and what? then he just then he walks up to this like uh, to the sensei guy at the front, and then the sensei bows to him. Whoa! What? And then he just walks out. 
Okay. And that's it. Cool. But I'm so I'm assuming he's one of our storm ninjas that's going to be in, I love that coming term. into the base. Storm ninja. I stole it from Archer to be that's honest. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan of it. It's Pretty a good, good. it's a good storm term. Ninja. Um I think that's going to happen and I think that we're going to I think Julia might start little by little remembering more mm -hmm. if she hasn't already remembered everything since the this whatever glowy yeah. eyes thing has happened. I want to see how she views the world now with these yeah. crazy new eyes. I want to know what these new powers are if there's powers. If there's if powers at all, yeah. right? Um, I want to see. I want to see Sarah tell Alan about her cancer. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm figuring we're gonna see at least one of either Dan, Hitaki, or Sergio. One of them is gonna switch sides in our minds to be Dan. good. Dan is the closest, but mm -hmm. I'm not sold on it yet. Sergio's Sergio's on his way. Now that he knows about the missing kids, that's gonna be a big thing yeah. for him. He's not gonna be able to handle it. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Dan looks so cute and cuddly in that little warm. Oh, and his parka, moment. yeah. Oh, the parka, and he was on that big smile he gave when the oh, his sister went to a big hug. Hug. I'm like, go Dan. Like, to Luke. Yay. So yeah. Julia finally this believes in the heart of the cards. She's the blue eyes white dragon, and we're gonna see DBZ coming out. Oh, Spare oh, bomb. Now we're no, doing Yu-Gi-Oh. Really? I, I, I made a bunch of predictions throughout the episode, so I don't really think any of my predictions are. I never really watched Yu-Gi-Oh, but I know that. That card. Do you guys want to get into Yay. our yeah. special segment? Yeah, yeah. Guys, so if if you don't want to listen to us be goofy for like the next five minutes, then just the turn part. off your podcast because we love you and we'll right. see you next week. But if yeah. you do, you can just listen. If you to do, us. you can we, just listen because we haven't been goofy this entire. Right. You no, know, yeah. not at all. So um, we got a tweet uh, earlier this week um, from at Spectral Helix L, the the wonderful Miss L, uh, who's making a Helix musical which is yeah. just totally rad, and we're so excited about it. She it. and Neil Napier and Mark Anime, um, they uh, they made the lyrics for the first of the songs. See, anime is in his name, guys. I know, I was saying that. Seriously. Stop taking things that are in my head and saying them first. You get credit. Maybe you should try to say them first. He's loud. All right, well, uh, the, the first song, they released the lyrics for it, or they yeah. sent them to us, so we're gonna do it for you right now. It's to the tune. Of uh, my favorite my, things. Of like these are my favorite things from the sound of music. Keep uh, talking, I'll try to find the Oh you're gonna try to find the, the karaoke this, track? Yeah. I would love oh, that. It's happening. Yeah, the karaoke track would be perfect. Uh so what I think we would love to do for the rest of the season, since we're doing these wacky songs anyway, yes. is if you at home would like to come up with a Helix song parody for us to sing. You can write up the lyrics and you can send it to us. Either uh, send us a tweet on Twitter, or um, we'll we'll have a we'll have an email address for you to send them to next week. Um, but get working on them. Tweet at us, and we'll give you you know our personal information. We can we can figure out how to get yeah, it we'll to us. If you have the lyrics, we yeah. will find them. And what we're gonna do is uh, every week. We're gonna do uh, a fan <laughs> written song, and we'll do an original song right. improved on the spot. Yeah. And we have it. Yep, we have it. Great. Let's this. make right, this guys. magic happen. And we'll happens. do a different one with Neil, even though this one's for like Neil and all that. Yeah. We love, you, we love you, Neil. And Mark. And Kat. Everybody. And Meguin. Love Meguin. Uh, it was supposed to just start. All right, just turn. Huh. Do one more <laughs> God, time. guys, you're messing up. Take two. Black goo and monkeys and cold arctic bases Gurneys and vials and masks on their faces Panic and intrigue while Miss Warwick sings These are a few of my favorite things And spooners and black from their noses Vectors and bald rats in weird sexy poses Sedition and lies and the chaos they bring these are a few of my favorite things When the rats bite, when the goo flings When I'm feeling sad I simply remember my favorite things And then I don't feel so bad It's over guys <laughs> <laughs> you totally won. And I think so did the folks at home. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not too bad. We should start like a band. I know. Well, there's only We're one. We're terrible. Uh, <laughs> here's what I'm saying. Not a good idea. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant lyricism from, uh, that was amazing. from uh, Spectral Helix L, uh, Neil Napier, and Mark Goname. Could have used one or two more monkey references, but that's just me. Um, now, before. What? Nothing. 
Okay. Now, before the show, Steven, you were noodling around with something that I quite enjoyed. Noodling. Which which one was I doing? Which uh, Bon Jovi bon song was it? You were doing... Uh, living on a prayer. Living on a, living on a prayer. Yeah. Yeah, living, uh, yeah, living on a prayer. Uh, do you remember what you were doing? Yeah, but I could do uh, Dead or Alive's better. Yeah, then do that one. All right. What? Yeah, we liked living on a base, but we could we could join it. We have many one. episodes left. I guess that's, that's all I'm saying. Whoa, living on a base. Whoa, whoa, spoilers. Oh, whoa. Jesus. Sorry, I got really excited. You guys. Okay, so okay, let's 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 look it up real quick. We got like five. We got like four minutes we before got we got to wrap up. Great. All right, we're so you guys up. can talk about other stuff. How Great. about Kira? Let's spoil that again. Kira is coming in next yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. So be sure to join excited. us again. Yeah, Kira Zagorski, beautiful, deadly, Super Saiyan. We're gonna grill Super her Saiyan. about all of her special powers. The first thing I'm doing is looking straight into her eyes. Great, that's that's a good call. It's that's, a good way to meet a person and do people. a first impression. <laughs> um, all right, guys. All right, we got this. We got this. Let me turn my mic down. Yeah. Too fast. Hmm. I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God! Oh, wow, bring that! Long bring long that show. heat! Bring that thunder! I should skip forward a little bit. This is a little bit. No, no, this you should. is flowing. Yeah, it's a long intro, guys. It is. Once upon a time <laughs> in yeah, Antarctica. Right. Peter used to have a wife. <laughs> no, he now didn't. he's screwing <laughs> Sarah the down, and he's killing the key. <laughs> He's talking about Alan, we know. Yeah, I guess Alan's, Alan's so lucky. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Monkeys used to live on the base. Monkeys. They got infected now with disease. Because they're so cold, they're cold. Now they're, now they're dead. We got to hold on. We're living on a base. Not yet. What? <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> We gotta find out what causes this to infect before we turn into vectors. Whoa! Why? Whoa! Oh, living on a face. Right, guys, I, think, I think we're good. Right. Are we good? Yeah, I, we, we have to write it out. It's gonna yeah, be so lame. Fine. fine. We fine. promise rehearsal for future songs. So fine. Guys. Here's fine. Mine will never be rehearsed or pre-written. They're gonna be originals off the dome. That's a promise. That's a promise. They'll also be off air. Now that we've lost all of our listeners. Great. No. Uh, Liz Rishmaui, where can the people find you? Um, You know what, Matt? I think the people could find me on, uh, what's that website? Twitter. Yeah, mm. uh, at Lizzie Maui. That's at L-I-Z-Z-Y-M-A-W-Y. Also, follow me on Instagram if you like. Same name, and uh, yeah. Great. Zach Wilson. You can catch me on Twitter at that Zach Wilson, T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And you can also catch me here at Afterbuzz on Grim, Almost Human, and Archer. Awesome. You can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S T P H E N L E M I U X, or you can look like right there and you'll see it. Uh, like and then Matt, things. where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M A T T L I E B E R M A N. And you can also find me here on AfterBuzz TV, all over the place. Almost Human with Mr. Zach Wilson. Uh, I got uh, Agents of Shield, Justified, Lost Girl, um, D Doctor Who Classics is coming back. I got this. Banshee on Cinemax. Uh, <laughs> Are we are, are we are we done being Cougar being Town in, and you're being getting you're doing Sherlock Cougar right? Town and we're doing more Sherlock we're doing more Sherlock we just recapped season three we're going back to the start recapping seasons one and two which are on Netflix and you can totally watch them and uh, hey if you you're in the L A area and you love live comedy you can come see me at the I O West Comedy Theater on Hollywood Boulevard six three six six Hollywood Boulevard March 9th at nine p m as a member of D J Fawcett get it you're busy and I'm done. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Ziz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.